Welcome to Inbox with Julia Cosby. I'm your host, Julia, and on this episode, I'm joined with a very special guest, Fern One of Amido Hawk Couture. Yes. Welcome to Toronto. This is your first time coming to Canada. Yes. And how are you enjoying it? Why is this the first time you're deciding to come here? Um, honestly, since before, when I was a kid, I love to come to Canada. I don't know why. There's like a calling. I don't know. But uh, this is now the opportunity because my friend uh, told me how about come here to Canada and do the show. So, because it's a dream, so I decided to come. Speaking of dreams and childhood, when did you first start designing? Because formally you, d you never had training growing up until you entered a competition. That's yeah. where you had your big break. Yes. So were, were you designing before that? How did that all come about? You're, you're no. a very natural designer. No, it all started when I was uh, young. Yes. I love watching my grandmother and mother dressing up and I really don't know fashion designer. I was thinking about tailors only. Yes. And then during high school, then all of my friends would want to be like a designer. And then the closest I can get is fine arts major in advertising because there's no fashion school in the Philippines that time. So after, so I took a fine arts major in advertising and then there's a huge competition in the Philippines and the judges are top designers in Paris and Japan and uh, I joined the competition, I won and I went to Paris as a surprise and then um, now when I went to Paris it's like because the, the prize is like to show young designer the the real uh, business of fashion it's because fashion is not just art form it's also like a business so when I went to New York I apprenticed and worked with Josie Natori she's my mentor and then she showed me and teach me and uh, and, uh, and and after that one, I went to uh, to, to, to New York, to New York work. Yes. And then I enroll in short courses like draping, pattern making, because you should know the basics. Where did you study? FIT. What was the most valuable lesson Josie taught you? Be responsible. Be responsible. How yeah, so? because that time I was a bit young, <laughs> yes. and uh, the idea of New York is just to have fun. Yeah. So I was like all night all day enjoying myself and it's my first time to be in New York so so I was enjoying and there's like one lesson that Josie told me because that day we had like a, a meeting yes. and it's a buyers meeting and I should be there at least to to witness and to learn more about the, the business of fashion and I was late because I was partying all night and then she told me, I don't care about your personal life, but if you want to succeed in this business, you should be responsible. And was that the moment that you kind of shifted ways and you're a lot more focused on your design work? When I won the competition, it made me you know, think and realize that uh, I have to show more. Mm. I have to show, aside from being creative, you should see the quality. There's a lot of things that you have to be conscious about. Now, your mom and your grandmother are very big muses for you. Yeah. Were they very supportive of you growing up and yeah. being interested in fashion? Yeah, they're very supportive. How so? How were they supporting you? Because uh, since a younger age, they, they know that it's my passion yes. to, to design and to make dresses for my Barbies. That's, all, that's what I hear from a lot of designers. They grow yeah. up, they're making outfits for their Barbies. Yeah. Yeah. Or are you just using some fabric that was around the yes, house? Yes, yes, like on And, and you know? it, di it di probably didn't look anything quite as glamorous no. as this. No, 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 no. Oh, let's, let's talk about your collection right now. You have a lot of pastels that you're using. Mm -hmm. Why did you decide the pastel palette? Um, number one for this collection, I was thinking about more uh, about nature. Uh, the inspiration is all about flowers, all about birds, and uh, I want to show like uh, a sorbet colors because it's very feminine, very fresh, and it's good for summer. And I love also the pastel shades. 
What kind of woman do you design for? Uh, the one who's not afraid of the dictates of fashion. Mm. And a lot of your work, it's very, very intricate and detailed. When you're designing, what is the thought process you go through? What's the uh, first thing that It depends. You sometimes through movies, sometimes through architecture, books, my travels, my trips. So it depends. Are you first thinking about the shape of the dress, how you want it to go, and then adding the details? Or are details the first thing in your mind? Details is important, especially if I can see like architectures or old buildings. Or like vintage postcards, you know? Very nice. So, is there anything that particularly inspired these dresses? Anywhere you visited, or you mentioned architecture? This one is there... at uh, Versailles. Uh, Versailles. In France, yeah, in Versailles. Marie Antoinette. Marie Antoinette. Yeah. What partic- was there a particular outfit that really piqued your interest? No, I was watching the, the, the series Versailles, and I love that series, so... I started to think, how about I'll create this collection, uh, Versailles. Now, you've designed for a number of celebrities, yes. including Beyonce. Yes. How did how did that all come about? Uh, it all started with a German sex up model, wow. Heidi Klum. Uh, she invited me and to... And she's your favorite. Yes, of course. She invited me to go to Germany to do the, the finale show of German sex up model. And then I went there to do the show, and then... The guest for that event was Katy Perry, and uh, we talked with Katy's management and everything, because after a year, uh, during the next summer, she'll be doing the California Dream Tour. So I did some collaboration with, with, uh, with Katy, and then after that, I did some outfits for her concert. And then it opened doors. It opens to Beyonce, Nicki Minaj, Shakira. Very nice. Now, a motto means beloved. Is that correct? Yeah, beloved in Italian. So, how you went from designing wedding dresses to designing for rock stars and mm-hmm. pop stars? What was the evolution in your designs between? No, since two? before, I really love to dress up pop stars because it's more uh, more creative. It's more open, and there's no restrictions or. Because they have this fantasy, they have this dream. Are, are they coming up with the fantasies and no, you're fulfilling they, it? No. Or you're coming up with no. the fantasies? Their management, because it depends on what image and what yes. the, the idea for the, for the album or for the concert. So they're feeding the information that we want something like, and then you design, and then they will check it, and then they will approve it, and then... So when you're designing an outfit like that, of course it must be hard knowing that so many people are going to be looking at that yes, particular yes, design. Yes, yes. There must be a lot of pressure. So how yes. do you first go about that? Are you watching videos and are you watching, keeping up with their social media, of what their style particularly is? Or how do you start a project like that? No, it depends on what's their uh, mood board. Because they're giving, they're giving you a mood board. The whole concept is uh, with this management, with their management. So that's basically it. And then you have to to work your 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 idea according to to their theme. Now speaking of style evolution, mm-hmm. you've been designing pretty professionally yeah. since 1994. Yeah. Uh, what, what has been your evolution from 1994 90, till now? What do you mean by evolution? Like, like when you first started designing in '94, it might have not looked the same as now. But the the soul of uh, the collection yes. or my design is still the same. But it's like it depends on the, the upgrading because there's new technology, new new patterns. Which technology are you using? Uh, like now, instead before in the Philippines, we are using flat patterns. But in Dubai, we're using draping. Oh, wow. So it's both, because uh, flat patterns is very commercial, while draping is like made to order. You have to drape it to the, the actual uh, body of the client. And your dresses are very expensive. Are you using like laser cutting? And yes. You're using crystals yes. all over your yes, dresses. Yes, crystals. How often are laser you using this? Cu- because me as a designer, I love uh, fabrications. I love mixing fabrics. I love uh, fabric manipulation. So th- that, that's it. I, I, I love to experiment. Because for me, it's, it's like day to day you learn 
you learn things. It, is it hard for you having to come up with new designs all the time? With such detail, this is these sometimes, are masterpieces. Sometimes, yeah. sometimes, yes. How often are you uh, designing a dress, or some days do you just design no, many? Every day, every day I'm designing because I have like clients that I have to 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 deal with. Are they usually wedding clients, or wedding what? What is your parties. favorite dress to make? My favorite. No, no. I don't know. <laughs> I, I can. I don't know. They're all your favorites. I um, yeah. Now you experiment with a lot of different themes during your runway show. So yeah. I saw some S and M, some sex, mm -hmm. good versus evil. Yes, yeah. Is there any themes that you're thinking of, and how do you come up with these themes? It depends. Like if I'm inspired with a certain movie, or I'm inspired with a, a certain uh, city. So it depends. What inspired the good versus evil? Uh, it's the circus of uh, good and evil. So this one is like uh, I was launching a perfume and holy that time. So I came up with that idea with a perfume. It's unholy. So it's either you're holy or you're unholy. So <laughs> I always love the contradictions. And your look, um, I'm sorry, I just have to comment on it. It's it stands out a lot. Have you always done your hair, or do you um, do you style yourself to stand out? No, usually no. What you I'm wear wearing is only uniform. I only wear all black, and that's it. Would you say that you're in the black and white stage right now, with yourself, with your personal style? And does your personal style affect? No, I don't think style? about my personal style because for me, it's like uniform. What I want the people to see is my work, not me as a, a, as a designer. And what do you hope to achieve coming to Toronto? Uh, actually, we're planning to, to make it more global, to make it more uh, ready to wear. That's the, the main goal of Amato. Me and my business partner, Rashid, is like thinking about how to make it mainstream, to make it more affordable. What country would you like to come to next? Uh, you've shown already a lot of different cities around the world. Yeah, yeah. Mm. What would be your next city that you'd like to hit? I want to go to actually, uh, for vacation, not for work, oh. <laughs> I want to go to Scandinavia. Yes. Yeah. Why? Uh, because I've been around Europe, from the mid-Europe to down Barcelona, Spain. So I've never been to the Scandinavian, you know, part. Do you think coming to Toronto will inspire some pieces or some yes, interesting yes, dresses? Yes, yes, yes. Anything in particular that stood out to you? Uh, the, the natives here. The natives? Yeah, they have this uh, like the logos style. or emblems or you know. So, you, so it's very fascinating. You have a very big team that works under you. How are they uh, helping make the dresses or are they helping you design the dresses or is it only you designing the dresses? No, for clients then I have like a team for clients mm. then for the collection I do it and I have like an assistant for that That's so sweet. it's like separate you know because you cannot make it together now working in fashion so many years what is the biggest lesson as a designer that you've learned maybe the hard way or the easy way I think the best is to be flexible in order to survive in this business you have to be flexible how about keeping up with trends? Sometimes people want no, to do I, you find yourself no, doing trends. No, I just do what I want to do. You know, do, to do. You and you're very particular, especially with your runway shows, some of the mm -hmm. models. Um, yeah, because I love hands on. I love yes, them. I love I'm uh I love telling stories. I'm a, yeah. I think I'm a storyteller. <laughs> yeah, I love I love telling stories. That's why I want my set to be complete. I want to because aside from the collection, I want the, the, the one watching my show to be an experience. Because for me, if it's an experience, then you cannot forget it. Yes. It will stick, you know? So you're, you're planning the makeup, you're planning the yes, hair, the yes, set. Yes, yes. How do you come up with the set? Because you're, you're a designer, you're a fashion designer. Yeah, it's... I don't know. It's uh, do, you, do you have a vision of what you want it to yes, look like and you bring yes, it to life? Yes, I know what I want. When you're designing, do you have visions of a certain dress and you're just filling in the blanks? Yeah, sometimes it begins with a, with a, with a, not necessarily a dress. I'm inspired with a, a, maybe a postcard that I saw in Prague or, you know, so it, it depends.
say if someone was stuck and they're kind of in a drawing block where they couldn't come up with the dress that they wanted or they just kept sketching, what advice would you give them? For young designers? For young designers. And no, they, for me, uh, you should be flexible aside from hard working and uh, aside from uh, uh, discipline. You should be flexible in order to survive and uh, live life. That's it. Live life. Yeah. What are you hoping to take with you back to Dubai from your experiences here? To be honest, I'm not thinking about it now because no. I'm so tired. Have you slept? You had two no, shows no, here. No, 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 no. We're sleeping like two hours, three hours. <laughs> How have the two shows? Because you're showing at Toronto Women's Fashion yeah, Week. Yeah, we did it last, last night. And, last then, and then it's also this Fashion Week. Yeah. How have the two shows uh, differentiated between each other? Are they the exact okay. same show? Uh, no. Uh, we, we, one's a set, I know, and one's no, just strictly a runway. For Toronto Fashion Week, we did uh, it very commercial. And now for the church, we want it more, uh, more art, artsy, yes. more avant-garde. Yeah. Yes. What details are, are you changing the hair? Are you changing the changing makeup? the look? Yeah. Completely. Yeah. Put add-ons. Put you know to have a different feel. With your experiences, do more uh, doing more commercial and more editorial types of runway yeah. shows. Which do you feel is the most successful? For me in Dubai, it's more uh, more editorial, more editorial. Uh, more artsy. Why would you say? They love the things that I'm doing and uh, just this year we just opened our first pret a shop in Dubai and I'm still starting to learn you know how to be very commercial now there's a lot happening with you in Dubai yeah. can you explain what's going on you have the perfume you have the wedding dresses you have the dresses yeah. in general you have all these runway shows yeah. going on what are can you uh, dip into that a bit more it's all about time management because every season there's like a schedule and, you know we, we're doing the bridal wear we're doing you know so it depends on the scheduling so that's why sometimes it's so busy not sometimes all the time all the busy time. Yeah. <laughs> so I just follow the the system when did you feel that you uh, gained a lot of popularity? Because your dresses are very expensive, somewhere around $40,000, $10,000. When I started dressing up celebrities. And then everyone followed? Yes. What was the biggest turning point with celebrities? Did you get the most reaction from Beyonce, from Katy Perry? When did you feel the most hype and focus was on you? In your I, think, I think with the big celebrities, of course. Because uh, they're more... They're more uh, publicized. They're more talked about. Well, so, which celebrity in, in got the most reactions? Beyonce, Katy Perry. Beyonce and Katy Perry. Yeah. So, did you actually attend the the Dream Tour? California. I watched the California Dream Tour in New York. How how was it? Was it um? How did it feel when you saw your designs on stage? On of such course. a huge celebrity. Of course, it's very flattering and it's very. Uh, because it's a dream. You start with a dream and then suddenly you start dressing in them up. So, so of course, you'd be very flattered and happy. What's the hardest thing you've had to deal with designing in fashion? It's not about the designing, it's about how to finish it. Mm -hmm. Because time is very important for this kind of business because every day is a deadline. How, how much time do you think that you spend on a single dress that, say, a, a dress like it this? It depends. So around three weeks to a month. Three weeks to a month. Just on this dress? Yes. On the designing aspect? Yes. No, no, no. Not the designing. Everything. So for some of the dresses that you design, are you designing it and then you're going back and making adjustments later on? Does that help? Editing? Yes. You have to do the designs, do the dress, and do the fittings, and then after you edit the collection, sometimes your favorite is edited, sometimes, you know? So yeah. sometimes also what you feel like, like for me, like, oh, I love this dress, you know? This is the best dress that I made for this collection, but the worst you you thought that oh, this one is just okay yes. but it turns out to be more saleable than your favorite 
Well, speaking of that, I know you have a uh, fashion archive in, yes. your, in your store or your yes. studio. Yes. Uh, how do you know? Is it the design aspect when you're drawing and sketching the design or when it's finally made the finished product? How do you know when it's going to go into the archives? My favorite dress. My favorite piece of the collection. I always see to it that it's going to my archives. Do you, do you know right after you've uh, I know. designed? Yeah, I know. Straight from the yeah. beginning. You, you just have a special yes. feeling about yes. it? Yes, yes. And what are you saving it for? Maybe like a museum? Obviously celebrities. Because I'm planning to, to have, yeah, I'm planning to have uh, my own uh, coffee table book soon. <laughs> yeah. What would you write in it? Mm-hmm. What would you write in it? What would you talk about? To be honest, I still don't know, but I want to have a book. Of course. Of course. Nice. It's, I think every designer's dream. Yes. Well, thank you so much for oh, coming thank on. You so it's much. a pleasure to have you in Toronto. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much.